Here's a different patient, 47, uh, presenting with um, worsening uh, gait dystaxia over the past two months, complaining of numbness and weakness in all, all four extremities. Is a bit weak in the uppers. The cranial nerves are normal, a bit weak in the upper extremities, normal in the lower extremities, has brisk reflexes. Positive Huffman, upcoming toes, positive Babinski. So he has signs of upper motor neuron uh, disease and, uh, and uh, the symptoms uh, that would localize to the cervical spine. He doesn't have a cranial nerve deficit, so, but has upper extremity weakness. So it's going to be, it's got a localized to the cervical spine. And hence you get an MR of the cervical spine that uh, would help us make the diagnosis. You can see this is a sagittal, again, T2, sagittal side view T2. Why? Because CSF here is hyper attenuated or hyper intense. You can see here, uh, there's spinal cord compression. Why? Because you have what we call um, uh, disc slash disc osteophyte complexes causing pressure on the spinal cord. And uh, this is also raises a suspicion of a condition where you have, see that's just the PLL, posterior longitudinal ligament. It may become ossified with time and, and a condition that's called ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament, OPLL. And it's a degenerative uh, disc disease process. So you see this patient, you give them the diagnosis, obviously he's losing function. And this is concerning severe spinal cord compression. You know, if the patient suffers the fall, he has gait dystaxia, even without a fracture, he will have uh, potentially a catastrophic outcome because even without a fracture, the, there's, there's no room around the spinal cord and can get further bruised and contused because of the dynamics of the injury. And there's no reserve, uh, there's no room around it. So definitely the treatment here is not physical therapy or epidural injections. You gotta definitely treat this patient surgically. You can see this is an axial image. You can see severe narrowing around the spinal cord due to this um, uh, OPLL. You do a flexion extension. They don't have any instability. You can see here wear and tear changes within the disc. And this is your CAT scan showing the ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament. Even here, the dura is ossified. See, we call this a uh, crescent sign where the, uh, there's bone, the dura has transformed into bone, and that we take this into account during surgery, whereby we either uh, won't resect that or just shave it a little bit so that we won't get a CSF leak. And if we do, we can fix it and put a lumbar drain. But So you gotta treat this surgically. You can't just do a discectomy. You gotta remove the whole vertebra here, these two levels, uh, to remove the pressure off of the spinal cord. We do it through an anterior cervical approach, incision on the side of the neck, open up the platysma under the skin, and then we uh, identify the plane between the SCM, the sternocleidomastoid, and the strap muscles, and then we ask, and then we identify the omohyoid. We then either dissect it, move it up or down, or, or just cut it, and then we find the plane between the carotid sheath and the tracheoesophageal complex. This will get us down to the prevertebral fascia, this, and then hence you're on the anterior cervical spine, you dissect the longest collie muscles on both sides, you get more exposure, you put your retractor, and then you do your corpectomy. Corpectomy means removing the vertebra from the front. You don't go through abnormal, find the disc here, disc here, get down, find your normal structures, and then you can resect these vertebrae and the uh, compression off of the spinal cord very gently. You do you usually do it under the microscope. And then you do that, you put your cage, plate screws, and that's how it looks like post-op, nice and decompressed. This patient did well and um, his symptoms nearly resolved, although he had some cord signal change uh, from, the, from the beginning. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you liked that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.